We'll continue this later, Steve. How we doing, everybody? It's Kev Ashford back in the seat for another Van Cam on the biggest Man United fan channel in the land. This is the United Stand. Glad you could stop by. Glad. Uh, pin back your ears. Crack open the beers. It's time for Van Cam. Might be a bit early for the beers, depending where you are. But whatever floats your boat, man. Bottle of water, you know what I mean? Corporation pop, whatever you are into. But this is your 10-minute weekly video from Kev where we look back on past events, we also look uh, at Ten Hag, what he said in the press conference. There's so much to discuss because there is so much disharmony. Apparently, that's what the press are trying to tell us, but we have seen what's happened to them. Oh, yes, they've been shushed, yeah, banished from the press conferences. But we have to touch quickly on the Newcastle performance or lack of performance hmm where have I seen this before yeah at Manchester United under Louis van Gaal under Mourinho under Oli Gunnar Solskjaer under Ragnick and the f it's happening again it's Groundhog Day it really is Groundhog Day for some of the younger ones you know what's Groundhog Day it was where the same thing happened over and over the guy was living the same thing remember man the beaver the beaver in the box does that Get your mind going. Or oh, was that a different film I'm thinking of? Yeah, they don't call me porno kef for no reason. No, there was a beaver in a box. I'm going with that one. I'm pretty sure. I'll watch it again anyway. But the Newcastle performance, I mean, it really sickens me. It saddens me to see it that certain players that are still kicking about in this squad are the same ones that are throwing their toys out the pram. And it really comes down to, I know a lot of Manchester United fans want Ten Hag gone. They think that getting rid of Ten Hag, getting a new shiny manager, let's get Zidane in, yay! You know, a season of maybe a bit of new manager bounce. Yeah, yeah, that's great. But for the long term, is it sustainable or will the same absolute weapons in this squad down tools again? Because they will do it. And this is where it comes. I don't want to single certain individuals out, but I'm gonna because somebody like Marcus Rashford, who's given 350 odd grand a week, you only have to look at what Mikel Arteta had to do at Arsenal. He had major issues with the likes of Aubameyang. You look at Ozil at Arsenal as well. Once they got these big, big contracts, the effort levels they're just non-existent, are they? And where's the motivation for these players? The motivation should be the badge on the shirt and playing for Manchester United. You're in a privileged position. And for one thing I cannot stand, I can, I can accept being beaten by a better team. In this case, let's say Newcastle uh, at the weekend. What I cannot accept is lack of effort, no running. And we've seen this under all the past managers uh, post Sir Alex Ferguson. It's absolutely criminal. It's sickening to see. So where do we stand with that one? Hopefully, well, obviously the comment section is open. Make sure you like the video. Lots of likes on the video last week, which was great, considering the views weren't brilliant, but loads of likes, loads of love for Van Cam, which is great. Ten Hag, for me, you give this man time. But my, my overriding uh, kind of point on this is that changing the manager it will not change anything. Some people might argue that. I think it's time that we start dismantling this squad. And I mean massive, massive changes. If somebody wants to take Marcus Rashford, the likes of Anthony Martial, we, want to look. we need to clear decks. We need a, a new style, a new identity at Manchester United because these players continue really to, to drag us down. And it's, it's soul-destroying. It's heartbreaking as a, a Man United fan to be watching this absolute dross every week where we're actually questioning players' motives and their their, their attitude. You know, they're, they're, we're Manchester United, yeah, as Gary Neville would say. We are, though, and we should be doing better. But on to the press conference. Obviously, Manchester United, uh, Eric Ten Hag, decided, or Manchester United as a club, to ban four media outlets from the, the press conference that Ten Hag was doing. Now, this is mainly to do with Samuel Luckhurst, who is a weapon. He's like the, the Mancunian Fabrizio Romano, or he thinks he is. He just waits for Fabrizio to tweet a few things, and then he puts it out. Bloody hell, sorry. He puts it out as his own. He thinks he's 
He's great. And I, I like this from Manchester United. I've seen a few people saying that United shutting down the likes of ESPN, the Manchester Evening News, was it the, the Mirror as well? I think there was another one that was four in total. Trying to shut them down. They're the voice, the media that are trying to put it out to us. Well, United's uh, kind of stance on this was that they weren't consulted on these stories that were going out. And when you see a story go out where the media are claiming that 50% of the Manchester United squad are disillusioned with Eric Ten Hag. They think his training methods are too hard. You know, he's making us run too much. I can't, think I can't hack it. Well, just get on with it. Do you know what I mean? I'm in a job. Look at me here now. My manager sometimes tells me stuff where I question, yeah, question it. Should we do it this way? Should I really be going here first? Why have I did this first? Ultimately, if Dean says, no, this is the way I want you to do it, Kev, I go, right, because I'm still getting paid the same money every week. So I just go, right, if you want it that way, it's your way or the highway. And that's how, as it, how it should be at Manchester United. But the likes of Luckhurst and that, you know, you reap what you sow. If you're gonna spread fake news, uh, absolute nonsense in the press, then you have to deal with that. And Alex Ferguson, do you know, people are like, oh, Ten Hag's lost the plot. Man United shouldn't be doing this, shutting down. Sir Alex Ferguson did this before. You know, Sir Alex Ferguson had everyone in the palm of his hand when it comes to uh, putting his point across to the media. If you didn't like it, it you, they would have done exactly the same. So this isn't new. It's only because it's Manchester United that it makes news. It makes news because Man United are the biggest club in the world. And whatever they put out, a story regarding Manchester United. So what they're trying to do is stir up the big pot, you know, get it going. And ultimately, they're trying to lead to the sacking of Eric Ten Hag, which would be a major story for them. All this discontent. Do I believe that players are unhappy? Well, of course I do. You only have to look at the likes of Jadon Sancho. Is he happy to be sat on the bench? Is Rafael Varane, World Cup winner, multitude of uh, Champions League trophies, is he happy to be sat on the bench? No, of course he's not. But that's where we come to the point where we, we need to start clearing decks. And if it comes to that, the likes of Casimiro, the likes of Varane want to leave, then they've got to go. They were brilliant last season. But for the long haul and for the long-term gain of Manchester United, we need to be looking at younger players, freshening, it, freshening up the squad. And that's the way that it must go at Manchester United. But obviously we've got Chelsea coming up. Chelsea's going to be a really tough game. Of course it will be. They're kind of finding their feet under Pochettino. The thing that we need to do is regroup. What I want to see is a reaction, a reaction from the, this group of players, the, the, this siege mentality. And maybe that's what Ten Hag was trying to create by putting the media out, not letting them in. And it's, it's caused this kind of story. But you know, if a lion is attacked, a lion, will rise from the ashes. Don't know why I'm going with this one. A lion wouldn't rise from the ashes. But if somebody tried giving it a few slaps and that and tried disrespecting a lion, it'd certainly bite back. Probably eat you. That's what it'd do. Kill you. That's what it'd do. So I'm not saying United need to kill Chelsea this evening, but Chelsea will rock up. We know that they'll bring, you know, their away fans and all that. And they're, they're, they'll have a, a back catalogue. You know, they've got loads of songs, Chelsea. They, they will rock up and they'll be like, Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. You know, and that, that other song that they sing, is it Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. And the, yeah, with that one song, they'll bring that with them. They'll try and sing that, make out of the greatest fans in the world and all this. But on the pitch, this is what it comes down to, man for man, we need a reaction. And I'm so glad that this game is at Old Trafford because if he does decide to go with Rashford again and the likes of Martial and put them out there, there is no hiding place at Old Trafford. 76,000 fans out there, you've got the home fans. And if it does go bad, well, at least they can vent their, their feelings and their anger. Because if there's one thing at St. James's Park that really got on Kev's tits was the fact that these players tried scurrying off like dirty little rats down the tunnel without even going to applaud the away fans who had made that journey in the snow, on trains, in coaches, whatever it was. They get stuck up in the gods at St. James's Park where you can barely hear or see them. Steve McLaren... United's assistant manager had to stand at the tunnel and tell them to go back and applaud the fans. 
you know and people try telling me oh they, these players they sound you know they get it or do they is that what you do you walk away and turn your back on the fans that have traveled there they've sung for 90 odd minutes cheering you on and you put in a disgusting performance like that seriously yeah well there'll be no hiding place at old trafford this evening it's chelsea all the same usual suspects are ruled out for this one you've got a midfield that's uh, lost without like the likes of Casemiro and Ericsson. Obviously, McTominay will be in there. Seriously, yeah, this is where we're at. Maynou, not got a problem with, but I think if you stick a better player in next to him, he looks a hundred times the player he is than when he's stuck in next to McTominay. Uh, Malassia's a long-term injury. There's injuries everywhere, isn't there? I could go on and on. Well, listen, I've gone far too long. I need to get back to work. Uh, I'll be at Old Trafford this evening for United Chelsea. <laughs> God. Right. I'll leave you to it. Have a good one. Enjoy the match. And for Christ's sake, United, run and show us that you actually care about this club. Come on, United! Hi -ya!